What's going on guys, I'm Rob Sigler. Welcome to the channel. If you're new here, we talk about everything related to Photoshop. And today we're talking about fixing stray hairs. Now I'm not talking about one or two little hairs that stick out from the side. I'm talking about those clumps of hair that wrap around the model's face. How many times have you gone outside to photograph somebody and come in only to realize that they've got hair in their mouth or their hair is just blowing out of control, but yet the image itself looks good. So today we're gonna to talk about how to remove stray hairs using frequency separation. Now frequency separation is usually a technique used on skin. We take the image and we put the texture on an upper layer and the color on a bottom layer. That way we can manipulate the two independently of each other. We can adjust the textures, we can clone out things, we can smear the colors around, make things blend a little bit better. We're gonna use that same technique with hair. We're gonna move the hair to a texture layer, and then we're going to remove it from the texture layer using a couple of different techniques. I hope you enjoyed this video. It's something I sort of figured out how to do because I had to do it on this image. Now let's dive into Photoshop. Here we are in Photoshop and this is the image we're going to be working on today. When you view this image in a smaller size, it doesn't look bad at all. You can see a few stray hairs, but it looks like it would be something easy to fix. However, when you zoom in, you can now see that there are hairs on the left that are blowing around from the back. There are quite a few strays over here and most importantly, you can see that there are hairs covering her face and we definitely don't want that. Just like anything in Photoshop, there are multiple ways to do the same thing. There are some commonly used Photoshop tools that I frequently use with retouching. Those are the spot healing brush, the healing brush, the patch tool. However, when the background is very soft and has a lot of color changes in it, I find that it's difficult to use these tools because watch what happens. As you color this in, trying to fix these hairs, you can see that the colors behind the hair get really splotchy and it starts to look really fake. We could use the clone stamp tool and sample some colors, some layers in the background and sort of color in to color out the hair. But again, once you're finished, it, it can very easily look blotchy and it looks retouched. We don't want the uh, retouched look. We want it to just look like a natural picture. So here's what we're going to do. Let's go back to the beginning of our image. And first step is the easy step. And I'm going to fix the biggest pieces of hair first. And there are a number of tools we can use to do that. First, I'm going to use the patch tool and just get these really big stray hairs out of the way. With hairs like this, the patch tool does a pretty good job. You just have to watch and make sure that the colors don't change too much in the background. And that looks pretty good. So we have fixed the biggest stray hair issues so far. I define a stray hair as any hair that breaks the flow of hair. So these hairs that are coming around from the back break the flow of hair downward. So those I would consider stray hairs. This area on her left shoulder, our right, I really don't mind at all because it sort of keeps with the shape of the hair flow and I don't think it looks bad at all. Now, if you downloaded the action in the description of the video, if you double click on it, it will load up in your actions panel and this is a frequency separation action. It's very simple to use. Just hit play. And what we're gonna do is figure out how much to blur this image. So what I wanna do right now, we're just gonna run this action and we're gonna fix the outside of her hair. We wanna blur it to the point where we can't see any of these extruding hairs from the side of her head. So I'm gonna turn that up all the way until I don't see any hair sticking out. Right around 45, that looks good. Hit OK. And now you'll notice we have three layers in our 
layers palette. The first layer is the background layer. This is our original image. The next layer is our color layer, and I'll show you what that looks like by itself. It's just the colors of the image, nothing else, no texture, just colors. And then the top layer is called texture. It's obviously texture. Now, what do you notice about this texture layer? Well, it's mostly gray, right? Well, it's actually almost all 50% gray. And if we sample this gray area and look at our foreground color, we can see that it's exactly 50% gray. So what this top layer does is anything that is gray or 50% gray becomes invisible. So the texture is either darker than gray or lighter than gray. So if we wanted to erase any of the texture, we would simply paint with gray. 50% gray and it will erase the texture. So watch what I mean here. So I'm now using the regular paintbrush and our opacity is set to 100%. My color in the foreground is exactly 50% gray and I'm just going to color around to tone down some of these really shiny strays that are sticking out like this. Now you notice the texture is being affected, but the colors in the background are staying perfectly the same. So here's our before image and here's after. Already it is a tremendous difference. Let's flatten our image and let's run the action again. And this time we're going to try to get rid of these really bright hairs that are wrapping around from the back. So I'm going to run the frequency separation action again. And I always turn it down to one first because we want to use the minimum amount of blur required. So let's just turn it up a little bit. And there we go. We don't really see any hairs wrapping around. There are two little spots right here, but we can fix those in a minute. Now, our texture layer has all of our strays in it. And the color layer has all of the color. So we want to work again on the texture layer. This time we can paint, try painting with 50% gray. And right away it's going to hide those bright colors. However, look what it does to the texture of the hair. Since we are deleting the texture, it's only showing the color. And the color is blurred. So we don't want to do that. Let's try using the clone stamp tool. I will sample from right here a nice clean spot of hair and then simply color over here. Now this is good, however, you're going to start to see repeating patterns. Like here's a dark spot, here's the same dark spot, here's the same dark spot. So let's do something a little bit different. If you look at the texture layer, you'll notice that all of the hairs we want to fix are brighter than 50% gray. So if we want to use the stamp tool to darken all of these bright hairs, let's set our blend mode on the stamp tool to darken. Now we will only be affecting pixels that are brighter than our source point. In other words, we're only affecting the pixels that we need to. The less we have to change, the better. That's what's going to keep the image looking real. Now there are some spots where it, look, it looks a little bit goofy, but we can go back and fix that in the end. Let's go ahead and turn our color layer on as well. And that's starting to look pretty good. Let's fix this one little hair right there. Perfect. So here is our before and after, before and after. Our image is starting to look much better. Let's fix those two little weird spots. I'm going to go ahead and flatten the image. And with the clone stamp tool, I'm going to sample a good spot and just sort of color that in. There we go. All right. It's looking pretty good, looking pretty natural still. You can always tell an image has been edited when you see a halo around the person's head because the retoucher just used one of the automatic uh, clone tools. And that's what we always want to try to avoid. So now let's get into the fun stuff. Let's get this hair out of her face. And how are we going to do that? Well, if we use the 
any of the healing brushes or the auto healing brush. It's really hard to do. It's easy in some spots, like down here on her chin. However, when you get to this section on her cheek, which looks like the intersection of a ton of different highways, it's almost going to be impossible to get a natural look out of this because it's sampling from areas close to where you are painting and it's never going to look right. So let's undo all of that and let's run our action again. This time we want to blur the image just until we see these hairs disappear on her face. So let's see, right around nine looks good. Hit OK. And there we go. If we look at our layers individually, we can figure out a game plan for how to tackle this hair on her face. So if we look at our color layer, obviously there's no hair there, and the texture layer has everything. So we're gonna really wanna work on the texture layer. What do you notice about the hairs? Well, they are darker than the 50% gray. So we're gonna use our brush tool, and we're gonna set its blend mode to lighten, because we only wanna paint 50% gray and lighten the areas that are darker than 50% gray. So all I'm doing is painting with 50% gray with my brush set to lighten. Now I can make my brush a little bigger. Oops. Okay, let's turn our color layer back on so we can see what we're doing a little bit better. Now, there are some spots that need to be fixed, but that's okay. I'm going to speed this up just a little bit so you don't have to sit and watch the entire process. Now you can see on the teeth that the hair isn't removing all the way on some of the teeth. So what I'm going to do is switch over to the clone stamp tool and I'm going to set its blend mode just to normal. And we're just going to sample some areas and paint over the hairs where we need to. Now again, using the clone stamp tool, I'm gonna to fix up these little patches that look a little bit goofy. And there we go, the hair is out of her face. I'm gonna flatten our image and let's run Photoshop's neural filter and do a little bit of skin softening. I'm going to turn on skin smoothing. I like to turn the blur all the way down and the smoothness almost all the way up. And I'll go ahead and flatten that. We have a couple more spots in the hair that we need to fix before we are completely finished, but it is starting to look pretty good. Let's take a look at our before and after. So there's our before image and after. You can see all the hair on her face is now gone. The only thing I think we really need to fix is the texture of her hair right here. We did a lot of texture removal, which left the color of the hair, but it lost some of the texture. So what we're gonna do, is with a very small black brush. I'm gonna make a one pixel, eh, let's, do, let's do two pixels, I like to live on the edge. And I'm gonna turn the smoothing on the brush all the way up. I made a new layer, and when you turn the smoothing up, it makes the strokes obviously very smooth. So I'm just gonna trace the outline of her hair a little bit. 
So I'm just starting at the top and brushing downward. I might do this maybe 10 or 15 times because what we're going to do is make a brush out of this hair. All right, so here is our new brush. Let's make a selection out of those hairs we just painted by holding Command and clicking on the layer. And you will see that the marching ants will appear indicating that those hairs are selected. I'm going to go to Edit and select Define Brush Preset. And now we have a new brush, and wherever I paint, it's going to make these little hairs like this. Now we don't want them to be white. We want them to be the color of her hair. So let's sample some of the tones in her hair. And I'm just going to dab once or twice. Let's select some of the lighter tones. And you can go all the way out to the edge. That looks perfect. Let's, there we go. And that looks a lot better. So here's before we added some hair and after, before and after. You can see that we accidentally spilled some on her face. So let's make a layer mask on our fake hair layer. And I'm just going to paint with black. Whoops, I better set my blending mode back to normal. Now let's paint with black and just erase those hairs that we just made. I'd like to zoom in to 100% to see how it really looks. And let's add a little tiny bit of blur on those fake hairs we just painted. So I'm going to go to Blur and Gaussian Blur. Obviously that's way too much because they just disappeared. And... I might add 0 0.4 pixels of blur. We can add some hair to the other side as well. Let's make a new layer. And with our brush properties, let's flip our brush. First, we have to select the brush we just made. And let's flip it on the Y axis. And now when we paint hair, it's going to look like it's on the opposite side, flowing the, the correct way. So let's dab a few times. If you use your arrow keys, you can turn the brush and kind of align it with her hair a little better. There we go. That looks nice. Let's go to Filter and Gaussian Blur. Let's do the same amount of blur we did on the other side. And let's make sure there are no weird pieces sticking out. I think I see one at the top. I'll just paint with black and erase those. And there we go. Let's take a snapshot of what this looks like. So here is our before image. Let's zoom in a little tighter. And our after. Before and after. I hope you learned something today. This is, like I said, there are many different ways to do the same thing in Photoshop. If you learned something new, do me a huge favor and click the like button. And if you really enjoyed it, click the subscribe button. Lots more contents on the way. Have a great day, everybody.